Welcome back to another vlog everyone. Today we're going to spend three days and two nights in Dublin, Ireland. If you're new to my channel, my name is Antoinette and I like to help you plan well, have fun and travel the world. So let's get to it. This is Antoinette of the future. I have just spent my first 24 hours in Dublin, Ireland and I have to tell you before this vlog even gets started, before you pack for your trip to Ireland, if you're going in any other time but the summer, it is very cold and very windy and the weather is unpredictable. The wind chill is ridiculously cold, y'all. One thing that you can do to plan well for your trip is to pack the appropriate clothing. And that's why I'm so excited to introduce you to a brand called Quince. They have gifted me with the perfect items that I think can help you to plan well for your trip to Dublin, Ireland. Quince specializes in affordable luxury products. They believe that luxury doesn't have to come at a premium price. And by taking out the middlemen, they can offer you and I really great quality items from cotton to cashmere to wool at a price point that anyone can afford. Quality means that it stands the test of time, material that's breathable, that retains its shape, looks really nice and luxurious, and feels nice and luxurious. That's what Quince is, an affordable, sustainable luxury brand. I was gifted this wonderful Mongolian cashmere zip-up hoodie. The quality, y'all, is impeccable. From the seaming and the hems and the cuffs to the premium YKK zippers, Mongolian cashmere is four times warmer than wool. It lasts the test of time. It is breathable. It is lightweight. It is the perfect thing to pack in your luggage if you are planning a trip to Dublin, Ireland. Not only have I worn this zip up here in Dublin, but I started wearing it back in Washington, D.C. when I was boarding the plane, going through the dry, cold, frigid plane environment, eating food, and walking for hours upon hours. We just now got back to our hotel. The quality is still beautiful. It does not retain an odor. It is still soft and breathable and I am not sweaty at all. Cashmere is the perfect layering piece with a heavier coat to keep you warm and dry as you're navigating the streets of Dublin. I also picked up a Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater in this gorgeous green color and Hun picked up a Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater in gray for men. And yes, Quince sells both high quality men and women's clothing. So if it's perfect for Hun, who's really doing the bulk of our luggage <laughs> handling throughout this trip and he is comfortable and not sweaty as well. That is a testament to the high quality materials that Quince uses in their products. So if you're interested in checking out what affordable luxury is at a wonderful price point, then click the links in the description box below where you can check out the sweater that I am wearing as well as the sweater that Hun's wearing and my beautiful green sweater that I picked up. Thank you to Quince for gifting me the perfect high quality pieces to keep me dry and warm on my trip to Dublin, Ireland. Now, okay y'all, back to the video and don't forget to click the links in the description to check out Quince. The first thing we did when we arrived was follow the signs that say buses to find the Dublin Express, which is a bus that'll take you directly from the airport to the city center. They make about seven or eight stops at centrally located places, and there's also space for your luggage underneath. It was a really comfortable ride when we arrived around, oh, 5.40 in the morning. There are many buses you can take, but for the Dublin Express, it only cost 20 euros round trip, and we were able to schedule our return a few days later, making it super convenient. We were dropped off at Wellington Key and ready to begin our adventure. And here we have the world famous Temple Bar. Here it is, and it's just right across the street from our hotel. How convenient. Because it was so early in the morning and we didn't have any time to waste, we dropped our bags off at the Morrison Hotel, which is a centrally located boutique property within a 10 to 15 minute walk from everything we needed in central Dublin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We've officially made it to Dublin, Ireland. And it is about seven in the morning we got in after a direct flight from DC, Dallas to Dublin on Aer Lingus and we are just roaming the streets now as you can tell it's a little bit chilly All right it's springtime it's like what 40 degrees outside hun uh, yes we are loving it slightly cloudy slightly sunny and we're off to get breakfast so cute little shops next door but we're gonna go grab ourselves some breakfast then head on for a book of kills we want to see what we can do 
in just a short weekend. This officially kicks off our new series called Weekend Adventures, where we're gonna see what we can do on just a short weekend trip. So from a Thursday night or Friday, all the way to Sunday. And we're gonna start it off in Dublin. One thing is if you are gonna come to Dublin, make sure you look to the left because just like in the UK, or just like in London, they drive on the opposite side of the road from the United States. That's right, you heard it. We are starting a new series called Weekend Adventures. We want to see what we can do and eat and experience in only a short weekend. And so we started off at Kyo's Cafe, which is a local cafe that specializes in home-baked, traditional Irish, as well as classic healthy foods. Their scones, my goodness, are to die for and are handmade every day. This cafe was quiet, quaint, and reasonably priced. We sat and had a delicious, delicious cup of freshly squeezed orange juice. Hun had a ham and cheese omelet, and I had a roasted tomato with avocado egg fry up. It was so good, and the jam was so fresh. Oh, I ate it up, absolutely. And one thing to know if you're planning a trip to Dublin is that in Ireland there is a 23% sales tax, so be sure to calculate that if you plan on going. After we filled our bellies full, we decided to step into Trinity College, which is the oldest college in Dublin, Ireland. The campus is absolutely stunning, so if you have time to visit, I highly recommend it. campus of Trinity College. This is gorgeous. Not only is it a beautiful campus to visit that is picturesque, but it's also where the Book of Kells is held, as well as the Book of Kells experience. So come along with us as we get to experience the Book of Kells together. The Book of Kells is a medieval manuscript that features the four Gospels of the life of Christ in the most beautifully illustrated way possible. You can see how the medieval pigments and inks were made, as well as learn about the authors, the special characters, and all the details that went into the Book of Kells. I really recommend this experience if you are like me and you're kind of nerd out about graphic design and illustration, book binding and all those types of techniques that go into the artisan crafts. Tickets are about $21.50 per adult. Next to the Book of Kells is the Long Room. Your admission ticket also gets you into this stunning library that's been used for centuries. Right now they're going through a restoration process, so not all the books are on display, just like not all the pages of the Book of Kells are on display. But my goodness, this library just makes you feel very academic. You can also see the exhibit Gaia, a NASA satellite image of the Earth in full rotating display. He's undergoing restoration works where they have to take each book down one by one and restore them. It's incredible the amount of work that's put into this. And so there's screens showing the process as well as other artifacts and Irish history here. Well, there's something still to look at. And afterwards, we went to the Book of Kells Experience, which is an interactive museum where the Book of Kells literally comes off the pages. 
And if you're not really into books or graphic design or illustration, then you can definitely check out a few other places like the Free Archaeological Museum or the Art Museum. There are plenty of options for you to find what you need in Dublin, Ireland in terms of culture. For the tram, so it looks like kids under five are free. And there's a couple things that you can get. So you can get standard ticket, single return, seven or 30 day to all these locations. You just have to select your destination and zone. Here are all the ticket prices. Then you can also do a flexi ticket where you can have unlimited travel. Put in your money over here or your card, MasterCard, Amex, or Visa. Or you can touch your Leap card here. That's when it tells you where the next program is coming from. One thing I really wanted to do while we were in Dublin was learn a little bit more about the history and the culture of the people. So we decided to visit the Little Museum of Dublin. It showcases the social, cultural, and political history of Dublin through various exhibits, photographs, and artifacts donated by the public. It offers an intimate glimpse into the city's past and its evolution over time. And not only that, but it does so in the most entertaining and engaging way. Instead of a timed entry ticket, we opted for a ticket that allows you to visit at any point during a single day for about 20 euros per person. Our visit was about 30 minutes. Another alternative to the Little Museum of Dublin is Dublina, which showcases Viking history. Because as we learned on this trip, after the Celts, the Vikings took over. So if you're looking for an interactive museum, definitely check that out as well. to Stevens Greens Park, which is right across the street from the Little Museum of Dublin. I highly recommend that. That was a really fun, engaging, like 30 minute tour of the history of Dublin. Learned so much in such a little time and was thoroughly entertained. I kept it interesting the whole way through. major shopping street and I'll put wherever we are down here but there's a lot to see and do here y'all we are resting our legs out here because we've been walking I don't know since what five in the morning <laughs> roughly and so we are here at the intersection of St. Andrew Street and Exchange Street, no, or Exchequer Street? I don't even know how to pronounce it. Partially covered by Ivy. So we are at this intersection here, just kind of chilling out resting. After resting our feet for a few minutes, headed to the experience that I was looking forward to most, the Irish Food Trail, where we would taste hearty portions of Ireland's most popular dishes and drinks. We're starting our food court in Powers Court, where it used to be an actual mansion for rich folks, but it has since been converted. And there's different rooms in here, like a ballroom that's converted to um, a special eating area. So, really cool, really trendy. It's giving me a lot of hope. It smells great. And I can't wait for us to go about our tour. There's different places for home and art. And that's what looks like on the outside.
tour guide, Grania, not only has her degree in Irish history, but she's also a whiskey connoisseur. So she led us to some of the hottest places for the best dishes in Dublin. It's really ruby red in color. And we can see that lovely ruby red light coming through the bottom of the glass. So that's got clear, so they're perfectly ready to drink. And the other thing, if I ever went into a pub and ordered to find a Guinness and it wasn't in a Guinness bar, I would send it straight back. We started off with a Wicklow Farmhouse Brie Cheese Croquettes followed by a seafood chowder with soda bread which was like my favorite clam chowder, but so much heartier and better with all different types of seafood. And she also educated us on the different types of whiskey, how it's made, and which varieties are only found in Dublin before heading to our next destination. Having the best time of your life. What is this guy doing? What is he doing? Oh my god. You would know the Temple Bar area by the Cobblestone Street. It actually used to be underwater. So, fun fact. Fun fact. There's also bottle caps in the street. Wild. Oh, this place is 1820. stopped we tried savory dishes classic beef stew and shepherd's pie i had originally thought shepherd's pie was kind of disgusting looking with the ground beef but oh my goodness this dish was so hearty and so hot it even fogged up the camera when i tell you the flavor of the beef mixed in with the peas and the perfect potatoes it was phenomenal thank goodness we were on a walking tour so we can walk off all of the calories that we we're eating from the day we also stopped by landmarks such as the dublin castle as well as the market arcade where there are many local handmade goods for you to check out and buy as souvenirs after about three hours our wonderful food tour was coming to an end if you're looking for great taste, then definitely check out the Irish Food Trail. And if food isn't really your thing, check out the Guinness Factory for the famous beer, the Jameson and Tully's Factory for Irish whiskey. We milk the cow, we pasteurize it, that's all we do. We're really, really lucky with our standard of cream. Well done. Yay! Okay, so the whiskey we're using here is a blended pot. Whiskey. After making a tall glass of Irish coffee, we headed back to our hotel for one quick snack before bed. If you want to see a full room tour, let me know in the comments down below because I couldn't fit it in this video. Also, let me know which of the foods from the food trail you would want to try most. So we ordered room service. We're going to test this out. We got the sautéed vegetables, the fish and chips, which is fried cod, mm -mm -mm, with fries, and my ultimate favorite, a creme brulee. Let's see how it is. You can have that crumble there. Oh, I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Let's eat. Good morning, everybody. It is about six in the morning, and we are headed to the Cliffs of Mower today. We are walking through the streets, and it is a good morning. Lots of people up. Lots of people going around. We're excited because it's an all-day excursion. They're picking us up from Dublin, and we're heading out there to go see what's up. To go see the beautiful cliff sides and mountains and scenery. We're also going to stop by a couple of other towns on the way, like the uh, Wild Atlantic Causeway, which I hear is wild and people, wild and weather, and wild landscapes. So, looking forward to it. We'll see you there soon.
unexpected. Barack Obama Plaza. Like that. Obama country. Everybody, we've made it to the Cliffs of Moher. We're out here. It took us about how many hours from Dublin? Two hours. About two hours from Dublin. We have made it. So as you can see, probably behind me. So that's where all the buses park. We took a bus straight from Dublin. Cool thing about the cliffs is that there are gift shops that are actually like in the ground. They're like underground, like a hobbit's cage. It's kind of funny. And so is the visitor center, which is behind me right here. But we're gonna go directly to the cliffs first because as they say, get there quickly because the weather can change like in 10 minutes. So we're gonna try to make this hike up as quickly as possible. If you have any sort of mobility challenges, there are golf carts that will take you up. You just have to let somebody know at the visitor center and you get kind of like an expressway up. But I'm looking at it kind of in advance. These cliffs are epic. They look better in person. Yeah, definitely better. Because when I saw the listing online, I was like, oh, okay, it's just some cliffs, but these are really epic. I cannot wait to show you. So there are two ways that you can actually go. You can go up to the right, following the paths, or you can go over to the left. And yes, my hands are mitted up because it is chilly and really, really windy. The ground is pretty much easy to walk on. You know, no complaints there, but definitely bring your hats and don't bring an umbrella because an umbrella would probably just turn inside out. It is way, way too windy for that. You excited to be here, Ed? Yeah, definitely. This is definitely what I wanted to see in Ireland. Be very careful. Make sure you don't fall off the cliffs. We just made it to the top of the hike. Wow. Slightly cloudy today, but still a beautiful view. What do you think, Hen? Nice hike. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. What other thoughts do you have? <laughs> I was just saying it's brutal out here, but it's cold. And yeah, it is. It is brutally, brutally cold. My mouth is starting to numb up. <laughs> My mouth is starting to numb up because of the cold. But it is gorgeous. Wild, wild, wild. So if you are looking to go to the Cliffs of Moher, a couple of things. One, the group tours are pretty nice. You meet at a centrally located location. For us, it's Dublin. You get on a bus and they just take you directly here. It's really nice, convenient. You get admission tickets. You get a little history along the way of the country and the cliffs. It's a pretty cool deal. And again, if you are trying to come to the Cliffs of Moher to help you plan well for your trip, layer up, baby. <laughs> Make sure you wear some mittens. I've got my glittens on, definite hats, coats on, and don't forget to also have some warm layers underneath. For us, we're rocking that Mongolian cashmere that's super warm. Wool is really warm, so my goodness. I, I got a face mask, you know, just to cover my face because it's so cold, yeah. Actually in the face. Hey, mask might be coming back, nice and warm. <laughs> but oh my goodness, the, the grass here is even really I mean, not to change topics, but like, look at how soft this grass looks. Oh my gosh, like, look at, look at how soft that looks. And it's just blowing in the wind. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Y'all, look at my friend over here. He just loves the camera. Look at him. Oh my goodness. He's just there posing for the camera. Like, <laughs> you better do it. There's like birds out here like galore. Yeah, there are a lot of birds out here. 
And there's also sheep too, and you can smell the sheep. This is where we, we're going over here next to this castle. And along the way, as we're walking, that's our view in the background. There might be some people up here who are also cursing because it is so cold. Another thing you can bring to prepare for your Cliffs of Mower visit is a pack of tissues because your nose will run in the cold. Oh, oh, there go the birds, there they go. And every single stop here has a little something related to a song for the Cliffs of Mower, so pretty cool. Oh wow, you see those rocks down there? No, but, oh yeah, oh gosh, this wind is moving me back. <laughs> Hold on to me, babe, I don't want to fly off this cliff. While at the Cliffs of Moor, you can climb up this little castle, which is a beautiful lookout point to the sea. With little treasures like a fireplace and a hat rack, you can climb up the winding staircase to get to the top to see beautiful views in all different directions. With signs that tell you what you're looking at, the views are stunning from any direction that you choose to go in. After that, we decided to go back and head to the left as opposed to climbing up the staircase that is ran by the Cliffs of Moher. To the left, it's a little bit more dangerous. It includes an electric fence and private property, so your safety is not guaranteed. As it says, extreme danger, don't climb over. So this is a little less tested, but just as thrilling. And the views honestly aren't as great as with the official Cliffs of Mower, so try to stick to the right. And if you're feeling adventurous, then go to the left at your own risk. There are water fountains that you can use, as well as the visitor center that holds a gift shop and many more things. Let's check it out. This is your Cliffs exhibition, information table, ATM machine, and a cafe. And a cafe. This is the Clips exhibition space. Oh my gosh. There's a whole nother area. Areas for kids to play as well. Cute. This road here is known as the Wild Atlantic Way. This is because the Atlantic is to the left and it's very wild. Our Cliffs of Moher tour was not over yet. It included a stop for lunch in Galway, a vibrant coastal city on Ireland's west coast. Known for its lively atmosphere, colorful streets, traditional music and art scene, and as you'll see in a moment, the hearty food is amazing.
Thank you. Have a good day. Woohoo! We just got socks and a hat from Erin Allen's Knitway Galway Woolen Market. We've had the best time here, and now we are heading back. Trip back to Dublin now. We picked up a few local souvenirs from Erin Islands, like these wool socks, knit hat, and a couple of socks for me. After our 13-hour trip came to an end, it was time to find something to eat and spend our last night in Dublin. We also we are back and we wanted to recap and we went to Darky Kelly's. And Darky Kelly's features live Irish music, live instruments, people were dancing, they were clapping along. It was a good time, it was hot, it was crowded. <laughs> Before we went in, we asked like the bouncer, like, hey, are you guys serving food? He's like, yeah, if you can find a table. And he was right, because we didn't find a table. We had circled. So we just stayed there and enjoyed some of the live music, trying to strategize to see if we can get a table. But nobody there was leaving. It was fun. <laughs> like, nobody wanted to leave. And I don't blame them. So we enjoyed the music. And then we bounced out and went, we're like, okay, well, where are we going to eat now? So... Come to find out, our hotel has a really good steakhouse, and as we learned in our food tour, Ireland is best known for their dairy and their beef, and of course, their root vegetables like potatoes and carrots. So we went to the steakhouse, that food, and wow, the Morrison Grill is delicious. They have this um, Jasper Grill, which is actually Spanish in nature, where it's like a grill slash oven, and oh my gosh, that steak was cooked to perfection. And so I had the um, aged, 28 day aged filet and Hun had the sea bass. Yeah, the sea bass, yeah. Mm -hmm. What else did we eat? We also had dessert, the apple tart. It was like a, in the shape of a small frisbee. It had ice cream, mm -hmm. and vanilla ice cream in the middle. And we split that. Yeah, I'd say the apple tart was good. Yeah. The ice cream, meh. But the apple tart was worth it in itself. So what would you rate it out of 10? 10 being the best, one being like trash. I'll, I'll give it a nine. Yeah, a quick a quick nine, 9.5. The food was on point and the servers were amazing. And my goodness, my goodness, was it delicious. And so that was our day, y'all. So we had a full day. This is our last day in Dublin. And I feel like this weekend adventure is everything that kind of I was looking for in a weekend adventure. We had fun. Like, I feel like People, more people need to come to Dublin. Yeah. It is such a relaxed kind of medieval town with a lot of rich history from like the Gaelic people to the Vikings to the British. The people are so friendly and so laid back. Yeah, definitely. And the food is amazing. It took what, me by surprise. Yeah, we didn't expect the food to be good if we were being completely honest. Like yeah. we're like, okay, we don't really know like what's going on. But the food was really, everything we had here was delicious. You know, I've heard great things about it, but now I understand the pub culture is just so warm and quaint and friendly and conversational and fun and laid back and hearty. You really feel the warmth of the people when you get to one of the pubs, that's for sure. We've enjoyed ourselves here. I'm like, I don't know how this experience can get like any better. Today is a great day. Yesterday was a great day. And I think Dublin is definitely worth a visit. I'm sad to leave. We're not done yet. We still have tomorrow to get through. But so far today was an awesome day. It's, it's crazy because, you know, we haven't really had that much sleep. No. <laughs> I mean, we've been up for the whole day since like yesterday. Yeah. That's wild. When the travelers tell you to, one way to beat jet lag is to push through it and don't take a nap, it's the truth, y'all. Push through it. I was struggling on day one. You may not have seen it because I wasn't on the camera too much, but like I had a headache. I was tired. I felt nauseous. But once I got moving, it all went away. And then the excitement came, and then the food came, yeah. and, then, <laughs> and then here we are again on day two. But we got to go to bed because we got to leave in the morning and take you all with us on our experience. We flew Aer Lingus, and so we'll let you know how our Aer Lingus flight is. See you tomorrow. Bye.
right on time. I was so sad to leave Dublin, but on the way back, I learned that as a United States citizen, I could take advantage of the USCBP's pre-clearance, which means that we go through customs in Dublin instead of at your destination in the United States, but saves you a lot of time and you can walk off the flight as if you were on a domestic arrival flight. Once in the lounge, we received some excellent news. We're doing it, hon! We're doing it! We're doing it! Yay! Y'all, we got upgraded to business class. This is our first business class experience. So excited, so excited. I'm so excited. I just can't find it. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I like it. That's right, we got upgraded to first class and we were so excited. Although Hun and I couldn't sit together, it was okay for the just this one time. I had so much leg room and my seat had a comfortable pillow an adjustable massager, my own private outlet, my own reading light, Wi-Fi, a remote control for the TV, an amenity kit, which included an eye mask and socks, earplugs, hand cream and toothpaste, and wow, this was a great way to start off the trip. Not only that, but we had a custom menu where we can pick out options for what we wanted to eat. I started with some cheese crackers and onion jam, followed by cream of roast parsnip and seasonal apple soup, bread, and a delicious salad. I had skin on thyme parsley chicken with pea puree mash and roasted cauliflower. And for my arrival snack, a trio of sweets with a Cajun chicken sandwich. So good. This is my leg room. I have plenty of leg room. I I really enjoyed my experience in business class. The food was amazing, the service was so wonderful, and Hun clearly enjoyed himself as well. We had such a good time in Dublin and would recommend it to anyone who wants to go out there. We were so thankful for this flight and we actually left the plane feeling refreshed for once. If you have any questions about our trip, let us know. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.